thank you for doing this and dropping on yes, it so soon. I just thought it'd be a cool way to end the year and do a Christmas themed one. I should have sent you some questions ahead of time. So. Oh no, I wouldn't have read them anyway. I like it <laughs> off the cuff, man. You know me. Fair enough. So if anything's a dead end, I can edit it all out. And all That's that. totally fine. <laughs> How are you for time? I don't want to take the piss and like keep you fresh. I've got loads of stuff. Honestly, I'm fine. I gotta I gotta do a Chuck E. Cheese thing, but I got till after we're done. So do you remember when like the Christmas season began when you were growing up? Because now it seems to be like super early, like in October. Yeah. But it was a lot later back back then. What signaled it off in recent years? We always say it was when the coca-cola lorry commercial came on <laughs> right yeah you know it's so funny because I, I i think that's true um i mean it definitely didn't start until after halloween back in the day and now i feel like you start to see commercials as early as september you know and <laughs> and it, and you know and halloween's a really big deal over here yeah um you know so the the stores all have their halloween stuff out and then it's overnight and I feel like Thanksgiving, which is, you know, obviously another holiday here. And I know you guys don't have it in the UK, but everybody knows what it is. It sort of gets sidestepped now. Like it just goes Halloween to Christmas. But, you know, it's funny. I think that people see that as being this retail grab more than anything. Mm -hmm. Um, But I have to admit, man, I I like it. You know, I like the Christmas season. I like, you know. I think it makes everybody just a little bit kind, not everybody, but a lot of people, <laughs> you know, unless you're fighting over a cabbage patch kid, you know, <laughs> straight back to 1980, what, five, three. Well, it's so funny. I just watched this movie last night with Everett and Casey uh, called eight bit Christmas. And the whole thing is about this kid trying to get a Nintendo and the cast is great. The kid actors are awesome. And just so many references to back then, you know, uh, it's, it's great recommended, but so I think I saw the trailer for that a while ago. It looks oh, really good. Neil Patrick Harris is in it. And um, like I said, the Steve Zahn plays the dad and he's always great. Um, definitely. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I definitely see your point that it, it, you know, that it starts earlier, but you know, then when I got to be a teenager, I had the toy store and, you know, <laughs> we put those, those Christmas decorations up like, and we opened the satellite stores that we had, we opened October 1st, you know, so right. we were in it, you know, the, I mean, the, <laughs> the minute the malls and things like that started playing Christmas music was just, it was music to our ears, literally, because it was like, okay, people are going to get the mood now and they're going to come in here and they're going to buy stuff. And, um, so yeah, I uh, but yeah, I, I, it definitely sort of seems like it's coming earlier and earlier every year. I was going to ask about the toy stores. Uh, how mm. was Christmas in those? Was there any particular crazes you remember? Definitely. What year? What year yeah. what was it? For sure. I mean, several. I mean, you know, I had them from the time I was seventeen until I was around twenty three, twenty four. Um. So you know, the big ones were Talking Barney was a really big one. Um, Power Rangers. Huge. Right. I mean, that thing was, <laughs> I mean, it was bonkers and it just, it just sort of came out of it. Uh, Pogs. I don't know if you guys had yeah, those yeah, over yeah. there. I never Pogs knew what was, to do with them, but everyone collected them. Right. Well, the thing was about Pogs was so most of those name brand things were very hard for me to compete. It was very hard for me to, first of all, I couldn't afford to buy the quantities that like Walmart and Target and Toys R Us did. So I really like, honestly, those stores sell things like that sometimes below their cost just to get you in there. So you'll buy a blender and a hand towel, you know, because that's where they're making their money. And, you know, that's business. I get it. But it's very hard for a store like mine to compete in that way, which really, at the end of the day, sort of drove us out of business, um, you know, as video games really, really got more and more popular. But um, Pogs was something that I, that was our niche because, those stores couldn't do that. You couldn't just have these little cardboard circles out and just let people dig through them and stuff. So I went and got three 11 foot horse troughs and <laughs> filled these things. It, 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 it went the whole length of our store and, uh, and it was a real, real long store. And, and uh, I just filled it up and I would, I, it, most of them were the really cheap ones, but then I'd pour really, really good ones in there and collectibles and foils. And so on, any given Saturday, Sunday, I mean, that all that 33 feet 
both sides, just kids and their parents digging through those things, which then was great. It's fucking it, pumps right flying now, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, right now, it sounds like a freaking COVID nightmare. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's that's the world we live in. But that craze was a really good one. Um, you know, the talking Elmo thing was a good one. Oh, Holiday Barbie was a really big one. And then uh, My Size Barbie. They came up with this Barbie that was like four foot tall. That one was a huge. So uh, and Ninja Turtles were, a, were a, another craze that happened during my run. So quite a few, actually. Yeah. You know, it seemed like every year there was something. I think the first one was Baby Alive. I think that's like when I was still a kid and we were, you know, I, I wasn't doing it. You know, we, we just had the one store or whatever. Uh, and really, we were just kind of selling. <laughs> and so we were really just selling bikes and skateboards. So what we would do is we would go to other stores and find these things and and then mark them up you know two bucks and then just resell them just, just so that we could say through we, the door and stuff well just so that we could say we had it we had to right. legitimize what we had and honestly that's how we did like ninja turtles and things like that we would go and and go down come down to dallas or whatever and go into the store and and you know buy them for 3.99 and then we'd sell them for 450 you know and um you know, I'd, it was just whatever you could do because when you, because people will come in the door and they'll go, Hey, do you have this? And if you say no, they turn around and walk out. But if they, yeah, it, let me show you where it is. And they have to pass by all this stuff. Yeah. And where we made all, almost all of our money was stocking stuffers because again, we could have all of this, all of these things that were a dollar, two dollars that people could pick through and play with and spin and yo yos and, 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 you know, just things like that noisemaker, switchblade combs, things where those big retailers can't have that stuff out because people will just steal it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and so they couldn't compete with us on that. So you would literally have people coming into the store buying $200 worth of 99 cent shit, <laughs> you know? You know, of course, now they have those stores, right? Like the 99 cent stores yeah, and yeah. stuff. But back then, that was, that was fun. But again, that was the idea. Get them in to buy that, you know, Raphael, and then uh, they leave with a you know, Chinese handcuffs. And, um, you know, I'm not sure you can say that anymore, but Probably that's what they not. were. Yeah. I mean, it says it on the package, yeah. <laughs> you know, finger handcuffs, I guess. I don't even know. Did you ever have a, a Santa Claus, like a mall Santa Claus in your store? No, we no. didn't. But, um, you know, we, we did, we did a bunch of different events and things like that, but like someone like making an appearance, we never did that. Um, I don't honestly know why we never thought to do that. Maybe it was just, I don't know. I mean, this is, uh, you know, 88 through, you know, 94 ish. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know why we didn't do that. I, I, you know, my, uh, it definitely seems like it would have been good. I do know that like, you know, in, um, the way that we would get our locations was we would go. So we had the one that was open all the time. And then we had these other ones that we would just open up in different cities and the way we would get them is we would just go find an empty spot and then just go to them and be like, look, you're not going to lease this thing in the next three months. We'll give you this much for it. Like a spirit and Halloween kind of thing. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That kind of vibe. In fact, that's exactly what we they were. They stole it's, your idea. <laughs> they stole my, somebody sunk a bunch of money into it and figured it out. Man, <laughs> bastards. But yeah, a lot of times though, you know, we would get as close to where the Santa Claus was as possible. Um, if we were in a mall or whatever, yeah. but for the most part, we were usually in strip centers, um, which, you know, y like you guys have them too. I mean, it's just basically just a strip of things and there's a kebab shop in the middle or a, mm -hmm. or a coffee shop or whatever. Yeah. Nice one. What did you do at school leading up to Christmas? Was it a big deal? Like, did you do like a nativity play or like a last day of school party or anything like that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, school was, uh, you always had a Christmas party. Um, in fact, Everett's is coming up on Friday and um, I was going to volunteer to help with it. And uh, Casey goes, well, you better ask him because he's kind of embarrassed of us these days. And, <laughs> oh, and, no. uh, but apparently when she said, hey, your dad wants to do this, he was like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> so I don't know if her feelings might have been hurt a smidge, but <laughs> but yeah, th but same kind of thing. You have this holiday party. I mean, again, it's cha it's ever changing yeah. because of 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 whatever. I mean, um but now, you know, the kids get a half a day before they go out for break and they have the party and they give them chicken nuggets and they do a craft and then they head out. I mean, it was like that, you know, with us too. I mean, it's kind of like anything, I think, where like you're leading up to Christmas vacation 
you know, really, you shouldn't even go the last two days because nobody's doing anything. Your brain's not in that gear or that mode. (laughs) Everybody's just done. But yeah, um, I remember the, the, you know, you'd always have a a fun little Christmas party, um, you know, and then there would be. So when I was in elementary school, each grade put on a different play for the PTA, like or the parents association or just the parents in general, like each time they would meet or whatever. And so. One grade would get the Christmas one, um, and then one grade would do the uh, you know Thanksgiving or whatever it was. Um, and uh, I think for Christmas, we do, didn't really do nativity because you know I grew up in the eighties, so like church and state, you know, really didn't mix all that well. It was like when they were taking. I don't know if you want to get into that on your podcast, but it was like you know they were taking all separating all of that, which is wow. fine with me, right? Yeah. Um. So I think what we did, our play, uh, the one that I can remember was we did just like Christmas around the world. And okay. so we did like, um, you know, someone, dr- I dressed up actually as uh, as someone from Mexico and uh, and I came out and I you talked You probably about, couldn't do any of this now. <laughs> you couldn't. There's no possible way <laughs> that you could do it now. I literally came out dressed as a Mexican person and was just like, buenos dias. And like, everybody was like, buenos dias. And like, no, I mean, it, it, you're right. I, I don't know if it would fly these days. I, you know, who knows? I mean, it was, you know, <laughs> we were little kids dressed up as stuff. I feel like you're right, though. Like, you know, my son and daughter both did the Barnyard musical. And I feel like, like their kids aren't going to be able to do the Barnyard musical because they're going to be like, you can't dress up as a sheep because <laughs> the sheep, they, we can't do that. This is offensive to the sheep. <laughs> you know you know it's going that way you know it's got it that way. <laughs> it's got to we, it's at some point you know and in no way do i mean this to be targeted towards any of this no. fucking shit but at some point we got to draw the line and be like <laughs> okay guys like you know some of this is just getting a little ridiculous yeah. but oh, I uh, love it. I love who it. knows when we get <laughs> is it like that over there too like is everybody just you know, yeah. we can't offend anybody. And well, you know, I don't even know why I asked that. I feel like you guys have been more, you're more like that than we are. Probably. I don't know. It's weird. Everyone's just got a echo chamber now, especially with online. That's where it is. And it just yeah. spreads. Yeah. It's, uh, it's def- you know, it's funny. It's like, usually when <laughs> I'm going to say this so generally that it won't fuck up your show, <laughs> but almost always <laughs> when someone is pissed off about something, they don't even belong to the group that they're pissed off about them being offended. And then that group is over there going, we're actually fine with this. This is not that big of a deal. You know, y'all can put your signs down. You know, we, everything was great until you guys showed up. Yeah. Stop. And now us. Yeah. And now everybody's pissed, you know, <laughs> <laughs> man. So before the toy stores, what was your Christmas catalog for picking out toys? Or did you go to a particular one? Oh, when man. you said, oh, what do you want for Christmas? You used to Mine uh, was either Sears or JCPenney's catalog. And yeah. uh, if, you're too, if you're too young to remember those, and most people probably are. I mean, the JCPenney's and Sears catalog were these just, they were these monster books. And in them lived everything it wasn't even stuff that they had in the stores like you'd go to jc Penney's and they didn't even have a toy section sears would have like a really small one but in the catalog was everything that was how people merchandised back then so it was catalog sales and things because they didn't stock everything that they put on the order it's kind of like when you go to um best buy or whatever like mm-hmm. whatever website you go to now and they're like this is not available in store or whatever it's the yeah. same principle but yeah, we would, my brother and I would go through with a different color pen and, uh, in my grandma's <laughs> house and we could circle everything that we wanted. And, uh, you know, my grandmother would, would try to make most of that happen. My parents would, uh, would also, you know, participate and, um, you know, it was good. It was, a, that, that was a really big deal though, yeah. that when that Christmas catalog came and we would visit my grandmother and she'd be like, okay, guys, it's time to go through this catalog and circle what you want, you know, and, um, you know, it's because uh, a lot of times you had seen most of it on television, but it's they, you know, they would release all these new toys around then. And and so some, sometimes you were seeing it for the first time um, or, you know, it was something that you uh, that, you know, that you or some kid down the street had. What was you into? What you 
like a Star Wars kid. Yeah. So here's the thing with me. And I, it's just, I was such a weird kid because I had some of those things, but I didn't really play Star Wars. I didn't really, I mean, I had some Star Wars figures, but I'm going to be honest. Like I usually ended up like putting them on the fence and shooting them with the slingshot or, you know, (laughs) uh, make trying to make a parachute, you know, and send Han Solo, you know, flying or whatever. I, I, you know, I played with fire sometimes, you know, like we were really into just being outside. Yeah. I played a lot of sports. You know, we played a lot of football on the street and wiffle ball and kickball and things like that. It was all very organized. We rode a lot. We rode our bikes a lot. We made jumps. We, made, we built forts and we, you know, that kind of things. I had friends that were into all that, but like I had a few figurines, uh, you know, a few figures and things like that, but I didn't like have the, the vehicles and I never, I just never really got into all that. Um, no GI yeah. Joe. No miss GI Joe completely, yeah. but that yeah. was going on in my childhood. Again, it just wasn't what I was into. I was, uh, I was more into like, you know, sports and, and uh, you know, things that would get me into trouble, you know, blow dart <laughs> guns and slingshots and BB guns and shit, <laughs> you know? Um, what was that, the craziest that, toy you used to play with? I was just speaking to somebody the other day. We used to get like proper darts with like the proper, steel yeah. point and just throw them up into the air <laughs> you have to, like, yeah. get out yeah. of the way. oh man so we did some pretty crazy stuff uh we would we actually figured out how to make toothpicks into darts that our pellet guns would shoot and we would put on like big jackets and like have full-on wars like, like don't bring it up <laughs> you know you know and so you know i mean just the crazy stuff we did and then you know we'd do slingshots but we had like I don't know why these aren't everywhere now, but when I was a kid, everybody had this one um, sort of spiny bush in their flower beds that um, that did these little berries. And at first, the berries would be like green. You couldn't eat them or anything. And and those green ones are really, really hard. So you could shoot your friend with those and it would sting. But then they would ripen and <laughs> you'd have to be careful how hard you squeezed it with your slingshot. Then you would shoot it and it would explode on the kid, you know, just stain you could, all the clothes. The oh, everything. Crazy. You could shoot them with cars and or you could shoot cars and, you know, but it was that kind of thing. You know, we, we huge games of hide and go seek. And, um, but yeah, my brother, I mean, no. Okay. This is before my brother did end up getting me a blow dart gun, uh, fr- like an actual <laughs> South American blow dart gun. But, my mom bought me one at the flea market. Like it's crazy what my my our parents would buy us back then. And like oh, this seems like a very good thing to buy you. And I just had this blow dart gun. Um, and uh, just be you careful know, I, with it. As long as they said, just be careful with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we made homemade nunchucks. Like I I still remember how we did that. And that was in the fourth grade. We were already like we were already. I can't imagine next year ever having that kind of ability. But I was I was telling my wife this the other day. It's like I could already like work on my bike when I was ever at age. Like I could change the tube, change the flat tire. I could fix the chain. Like all of those things you just learned to do because we all had two working parents. There was no, you know, you didn't have dads working from home and all of this. Mm -hmm. So like we would, you know, we just learned to fix each other's bikes. And uh, well, that's because you'd be on like a ride for about ten miles, and you change exactly. come off or something. You got to figure out how to put it back. You, you got to figure it out. <laughs> You're right. I mean, man, back then, you know, you, you it is really funny to think about that because nothing was ever too far. You just had to make sure you had enough time, you know, to get back before dark, you know. But it was just like, well, we could ride over there, and you're right. Like ten miles, that would have been nothing to us. I can't imagine, you know, my third grader being even a half a mile away from our house now you no know, it's phone like, no nothing nothing <laughs> no just gone you know i'm sure they're fine you know house key in the sock you know and that's uh, and off on my way <laughs> <laughs> Different so, time. so christmas day and everything itself did you have a routine yeah. on christmas eve or christmas morning in the red yeah, household so we talk about this on the rockstar dad show a lot because um you know i've been married uh, a couple of times and um everybody's christmas is different and you sort of have to adapt to everybody's christmas but when you when you're a kid for some reason it never really dawned on me that you know everybody's was different but so we in the in my house 
we always opened up our presents on Christmas Eve night. All of them. And and say all of them. And Santa had already wrapped our presents. And for some reason, it was in my mom's handwriting, you know, to Jarrett loves Santa. You know, never questioned that ever. I mean, what an idiot I was. And so, but yeah, and that was the thing. And then Christmas morning actually was kind of chill. And then sometimes we would go drive up to my grandmother's and we would do that Christmas there. Um, that And then unless they had come down the night before and brought it all or whatever. Um, but yeah, Christmas day usually was pretty relaxed and stuff. We never did the thing where both my, my family now, and then with my ex and my, my two older children where they wake up on Christmas morning and there's just shit everywhere. And no. like some of the stuff is already put together and, you know, it's not wrapped and, you know, and that, that is sort of, and that's, so that's how I've been doing things for the last 20 years. Cause my daughter's about to turn 19. Um, but yeah, so, you know, back then though, you know, you just opened it all on Christmas Eve. It was all wrapped and you know, that was that never did the Christmas morning thing. I think it's because my parents like to sleep, you know, <laughs> Cause that's a good uh, one. Cause <laughs> I, I was going to say, I'd never done the thing where, cause I mean like Christmas morning, kids yeah. are so excited about the presents, uh-huh. So they probably don't sleep that night and they want to get up as early as possible. And right. I was going to say, did you ever get up early and open your presents before your parents? Cause I did that one time and I got oh, into no. big trouble for that. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> no. That is not good, man. I, this is semi related, but not really related. Amy, who was on uh, the Jarrett Goes to the Movies podcast, um, has a story she tells where her and her brother peeked uh, and like kind of opened and peeked at all their Christmas presents, which I used to do every year. In fact, I was so good at it that my brother, who was five years older than me, would have me do his too. But I could one hundred position the tape perfect so you could never tell that it had been been disrupted and stuff. Well, her mom found out. And at Christmas, they got to open their presents and then they each got to choose one present to keep. And then she took all the rest of it and donated it to charity because they hadn't because they had been naughty, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. And I'm like, just the commitment of that, like I, you know, because I man, I mean, like I have a hard time, you know, punishing my kids for anything, you know, but man, her her mom really stood with it. How old was she? Do you know when that happened? Well, her brother's three or four years older than her, and I think she was he was like eleven. So I think they were like eight and eleven. She'd have been like crushed that. by that. Oh my god. Yeah, she's <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, obviously it's it's like it's stuck with her forever. Yeah. But um, you know, and she and she swears that her brother uh put her up to it as well. So um, you know, so you know, it's uh fuck that guy, you know. <laughs> um my excuse was like, Well, you say I said to my mom, Well, I didn't want to wake you up. Yeah, of course. The logic was like, I didn't realize how important it was for a parent to see the kids opening sure. the presents. 100%, yeah. man. You, and was it just you in the house? You yeah, the just only me. Kid? Yeah. Well, now we, you know, of course, we do the thing where, so, and now my Christmas is even different because now we, uh, we actually celebrate our Christmas Eve on the 23rd. So uh, Jack and Emma come home. The twenty third, we we do a dinner. We watch we watch a Christmas movie, um, usually Elf or The Grinch or Vacation, <clears throat> and then everybody goes to bed. They all wake up, and Santa comes to our house on the morning of Christmas Eve because he knows that Jack and Emma have to go home that night because they do Christmas at their mom's house on Christmas Day. So Everett is in the lucky category of Santa Claus coming one day early. Uh, and I think this is our last year, man. Like he's doing, he's nine. And I, I, I know that he's already doing the thing where he doesn't believe, but he's just act cause he questions everything. Um, and just it, it just talks. take it that next stage. Yeah. He's just, I think, so I think this is probably oh, it for like the magic of it. Um, which, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, my brother was five years older than me, so I, I don't even think I had it that long. You know, I don't I don't think I was nine and still believed in Santa Claus, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe he was, maybe that's one thing that he didn't ruin for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> did he ever, did Danny ever get a gift you always 
want to like, damn, I, I wanted that. He was jealous. That happened a lot because yeah. I always wanted what he had. And, you know, because he was my older brother. I mean, like everything he was into. I was, and I think that actually is a really good if we to throw back to the conversation from earlier. I think most of the time, the reason why I wasn't doing Star Wars and things like that is because I was really into whatever he was into. So he was into uh, like, do you remember? They still make them, but they're not as popular, but electric slot cars. Remember that you you build the track and it was electric and you'd squeeze the trigger and your car would, you know, you'd race and stuff. We called them scale electrics. Okay. Okay. So, but you could really get into that. I mean, like you could invest some serious money into it or whatever. And so, you know, he was into that. And so like, I kind of got into that, but yeah, I mean, you know, you got to think by the time I was in, you know, sixth grade. You know, he was getting a car, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, like it, it, it just seemed like he was all, and then, you know, I, and then years later, I would get that same kind of thing, but, um, he paved the way for me though. I mean, like he, he never had a phone in his room and I had, you know, I had a landline in my room and he didn't have cable in his room and I did. And so, you know, there's those things where he says, you know, well, I got everything ready for you, but. Um, yeah, there was there was always something that he would get that I wasn't old enough to have that I wished I had. But my parents did a pretty good job, actually. My grandma, too, of like. Kind of knowing what those presents were going to be and sort of getting me the younger version of it. Right. You know? OK. So like where he would get the slot car thing, I would get, say, a remote control car that had a wire you know, leading to it, which back then you didn't care that it wasn't radio control or whatever. But. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I pretty much grew up jealous of him, but, oh, you know what the other thing was too, that we would get, and I should have said this earlier, but the big thing that we would just get stuff for our bikes, like we both had like really nice BMX, like racing bikes. And so, you know, every year from, you know, my grandmother would take it to the, um, the bike shop there and it'd be like, okay, we want, uh, new wheels or we want these new handle bars or, you know, this kind of seat and. Um, just pimp so that thing at pimped it out. Oh man, it was. We both had really, really cool, cool bikes, man. And it was uh, that was that was definitely one of those things that I only did because he did it. You know, it was, uh, so that that took up a lot of my Christmases. What BMX did you have? Do you remember? I had a mongoose two. Nice. Yeah. So uh, he had a team mongoose, and I had a mongoose two, and then uh, I ended up getting uh, Z rims for it, which were the first fiberglass wheels. Uh, so it made it really, really light. Uh, he had alloy wheels on his and, uh, but man, Oakley grips on there. And, uh, we had, you know, all of the, the, the gooseneck you had to get was just the, just the right one. And, you know, the, the seat, you know, the, the seat, I wish I could remember what the seat was, was that I had, <laughs> uh, Dyna race brakes and, oh, and, you man. know, all of this stuff, you know, were just like, they were, they were really, really tricked out. Did the did the movie BMX Bandits ever make it to the states? An Australian it was, film. It was out here, but I, I we I never saw it. I see that kind of come up on uh, on online every once in a while and wonder what that was. But it's like Nicole Kidman's very first film, I think. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. It's got like crazy Pam Dare. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, BMX was such a big deal. It's like if you think about Pee Wee's Big Adventure, you know, his buddies in that are like the race team for whatever the thing, you know, whatever product that was, and. So, uh, you know, BMX was a huge deal. There was a track in Wichita Falls and you could go, ra- we never were into that. I think he might've raced a couple of times, but he had a friend that raced all the time. That was really good. And, uh, not really my thing, but, um, I was always scared of stuff, you know, yeah. like I, like all the jumps and stuff, like everybody would jump and like do tabletops and stuff. And I would just roll over the jump, you know, like, Hey, and, exactly. You know, I- we used to have a BMX track and I, I never, I, before I, BMX had what we called a striker, which was just a regular bike, but it kind of looked like a BMX. Yeah. My mom will always tell the story where I went down and it was like the steepest ramp. And you're supposed to hit that thing at speed. And I just kind of <laughs> trundled up it and just went straight <laughs> over the handlebars. I think oh, I did it no. Yeah. Like just, oh. literally just dropped off the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that'll get like. you, that'll get you disinterested in BMX really quick. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't so much of a crybaby as I was just not really that um, adventurous, you know. I mean, I, we, I I like to have fun, but I, I feel like there was always a caution light in my head going, yeah, yeah that's yeah. going to freaking hurt right there <laughs> if you do that. Do you have any video or photos from Christmas back in the day? 
definitely lots of fo- <laughs> definitely lots of photos. I'm sure there's some videos somewhere. My my grandpa had like um I don't even know, I guess eight millimeter or sixteen millimeter camera. And uh so all that stuff was taped back then and my grandma's got all that stuff. And uh so you know, it it'd be it'd be cool to go back and watch this. But it was the thing where he'd have to like set up the projector and you know, actually put that, but, and our favorite thing was watching it backwards, you know, when it was, when it was all over, cause he'd had to rewind it. He could turn the light on and you watch it backwards. And, uh, it's super, it's like you're wrapping the presents. There's a picture of, uh, of my brother and I that I put out, uh, every Christmas where I'm wearing my, uh, Terry Bradshaw Steelers Jersey. And he's got his Terry cloth shirt on and, and we're, digging into some presents and stuff. And uh, I'm sure there's, there's a lot more that I could, that I could dig up. My mom kind of went through all of the photos back, you know, 10, 15 years ago and sort of just divided them up, you know, yeah. like, Hey, here's all these photos. Like they're, you know, they're just sitting in my closet. So I've got them somewhere. Awesome. Awesome. And Bowling for Soup, we've done a couple of Christmas albums, Merry Flipping Christmas one and two, and you've done, Christmas stuff with Kelly from the Dolly Rots and you did some yeah. stuff with MC Lars way back when, which yeah, is some of the yeah. stuff you're most proud of or just all of it. Is there anything that jumps man, all of it. I got to tell you, I, uh, I like those songs cause they just come from such a cool place. You know, it's like, I think to me, I think writing an original holiday song is, is, is pretty tough. You know, I think to, to not just go down that same rabbit hole. And, and the first one we did volume one, uh, Mary Philip and Christmas volume one was just all covers. And then uh, I really wanted to just see if I could stretch it and and really write something unique. Uh, and so Merry Merry Flippin' Christmas too is is mostly originals. I think it's time for Bowling for Soup to do it again. Actually, one of these days, one of them's got to catch on. Like I, I I like listen to these and I and I'll go and I'll listen to like the Christmas radio stations and stuff. And I'm like, how is Corner Store on Christmas not on this? It's, it's like genius song. Well, thank you. I think so too, because it's, it's legit. Like, it's like literally all of the things that you forgot to get. You have to go to the one store that's open, you know, and then here in the States, when you go to like the corner store, which is, you know, a Seven Eleven or a, or a, or whatever, a racetrack, you know, like batteries are super expensive, you know, and like, <laughs> you gotta you pay for to these suckers. Exactly. <laughs> um, we but, need more uh, real is yeah. we need more realistic Christmas songs like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other um, even Santa needs a break. Sometimes I, I really like that one by us, too, because it's again, it's like nobody really talks about what Santa does throughout the year. And I send him on vacation. And my favorite lyric on that is uh, he helps the Easter bunny with calendar or region because the day the date of Easter Sunday is always changing. You know? Cause, cause Easter's always on a different day, mm-hmm. you know, and Santa's <laughs> got to help him out, <laughs> you know, cause he shares a birthday with Jesus. I don't know how that works. Actually. I, I'm it's, it's all, it's all great. How do you get your head in gear writing the Christmas song though? Cause you have to write it in advance. Surely got to write it in the summer. Yeah, and in yeah. fact, nice. <laughs> all of those bowling for soup songs were written on warp tour, which was the hot is it, it, the hottest you could ever be. And we were in Boise, Idaho, and I had to get this done because it was like, if you don't get this done now, it's not going to be out before Christmas. And uh, so we had a day off, which is very rare. And uh, I just rented a hotel room for myself. And I went in at, you know, what, 11 o'clock. And I came out at seven o'clock and I was like, okay, I wrote the album. Let's go see a movie. You know, And uh, <laughs> that's literally how it went. Men, men. Yeah, You shed some light on this for me because I've spent a couple of Christmases in America. But one thing I've noticed, Christmas in the States it seems to be over on December the 26th. Would you say? Oh, that? yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, first of all, from a we drag it on over here. We do you? Drag that That's out. <laughs> really? OK, so a um, couple of things about that in America. It's bad luck to take your tree down before January 1st, but some people do it. Um, Retail people are absolutely sick of it. Like, honestly, like the toy store really took it really kind of took the fun out of Christmas for me for really till I had kids. You know, Mm -hmm. I really I didn't like I I really didn't enjoy the music anymore. I I just was over it because that was just, you know, the the busiest time of my years. and, And I was going to college during the time and 
uh, it was just a lot of work, man. A lot of back breaking, you know, a lot of loading trucks and, and feet hurting. And, um, so until I had kids, it was kind of that, but anyway, so from a retail standpoint, you're just over it as well. And then plus on the 26th, which I think is a holiday for you guys, boxing day, boxing day. Yeah. Here, um, you have after Christmas sales, but it's also, and of course I know everything's changing with everybody buying online now, but Every it's where the re, the lines to return things is really really long. Here. That's kind of depressing. Really. It really is. <laughs> it's like so. It's either something that was missing a part or something somebody doesn't like or it didn't fit or just for whatever reason. And it really is just the saddest line. You know, <laughs> it looks the like saddest line. It does. It looks like bread lines. You know, like <laughs> we're just okay. It's come to this. We're waiting in line for bread now. You know. I mean, it, it, and you're just, it's just horrible. And like, there's just shit like b- behind the, the poor workers, there's just all these just piles of just stuff, you know? And, and I think most of the time that stuff just gets donated. Like, I think that there's just sort they sort of just write, this is in college anyway. It's like those big retailers or whatever. It's not worth their time to actually return most of that shit to the manufacturer. So it either gets destroyed, looked at, donated, whatever. But you know, they don't, they don't take the time to, and, and, and they don't, no one's checking easy. through that for dog hairs and all that. No, kind of absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah. You're one. And, and so, well, the, and by that being said, they're not going to stick that thing back on the shelf either. You know, I mean, that's not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, it is kind of a, but yeah, we're definitely over it. Um, how do you guys drag it out? So what, tell me, uh, quickly, cause I don't really, maybe I don't, I think I know, but maybe I don't. What is boxing day? I can't remember that there's a specific reason for it, uh, a term for it. I'd have to look it up online. Somebody might be able to shed light on it. But I always loved Boxing Day because um, you'd still have a great film to watch on Boxing Day. You had your Christmas Bond movie in the afternoon. It'd be a James Bond premiere in the afternoon. Everyone would right. gather around the TV to watch the James Bond film from about three years before. It was the first time on TV. But Boxing Day was just the same thing. Just carried on over. Great films on the TV. And then you've got that gap in between Christmas and New Year. We, I think we've been calling it Crimbo Limbo the last few <laughs> years. So that's the thing because you guys are, you know, as far as like national TV, you're fairly limited on like how many channels you have or whatever. If you, and so it used to be, yeah. You're saying that like they would specifically take those days and first time on TV, this movie, and then this movie and this movie. That, that's cool. That's, that's, that happens. That, that, that happens here too, but it, it has been a really long time for you that guys because- work a lot harder than we do there. Lots over here, lots of places close for like the entire Christmas period. But yeah, for you guys, yeah. it's like straight back to work. Oh yeah. You're straight back. I mean, restaurants don't even close. Not all restaurants even close the entire day. Like some of them will close at say six o'clock on Christmas Eve. And then they're open four o'clock on Christmas day wow. or whatever. Like Walmart stays open the whole time. I mean, that's unreal. We have like, we have like a com- like a service station open and that's about it on Christmas yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um you know and again I that is you know that is sort of one of the biggest adjustments that we have to make when we're in the UK though is that I, it seems like we're these spoiled Americans but it's just what we're used to. Everything is just available mm-hmm. all the time. Like there there's just there's never there's never really a time where you can't get something that you need or whatever. Like, and you know, that, it, that's just not your culture. You know, you guys are like, Hey, it's time to get off work. It's time to get off work. We'll see you later. You know, whatever, but it's changing um, though. It's getting more like, is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can tell. Yeah. I mean, you know, I see the good and the bad in it. I mean, over here, the argument is uh, Walmart or I shouldn't keep calling out Walmart, but I mean, that's just the easy. They're kind of the first ones to do all this shit, you know, but it's like, or, okay, let's say restaurant, whatever restaurant. It sucks so bad. You make your, your employees work on Christmas day. But what they don't understand is most of the time, literally 90% of the time, I would think like, it's like, Hey, who wants to work on Christmas day? And we're going to pay you extra or this and this and this. These are people that want to be working and want to go up. I'm in 100%. I mean, my, my daughter um, is a hostess at a, uh, at a country club here in Dallas. And 
she works the holidays because she makes insane tips. I mean, you know, it's like Father's Day. I think they roll a thousand tables through this thing, you know, and she's like <laughs> sitting half of them, you know, uh, wow. over the weekend. You know, so it's uh, that's the thing, right? It's like, look, you know, people want to work, you know, and uh, quite frankly, sometimes you wake up on Christmas and you need a new pair of Dickies. So, uh, you know, they're <laughs> they're there for you. You know, it's uh, sweet, man. That's where you can get them. I'll put you on the spot to wrap it up. Is there one thing you'd love to repeat again from back in the like late seventies or eighties, or a particular feeling you'd love to mm. relive? And I got the, I have the, you know, there's a bunch of good ones, man. I, I, uh, I will say that, you know, despite becoming an adult and looking back on all the shit that you know wasn't amazing in your childhood, you know which, you know, we all at some point you either address it or you don't, you know, and maybe I didn't need to pre say that before this, but what I'm saying is, as I look back, I had great Christmases. I mean that like my parents were always great about it. My grandparents were always amazing about it. Um, the fact that I'm a, a huge Steelers fan uh, is probably not probably is at least tied to the fact that for Christmas, my dad's family sent me Steeler stuff, you know, and that's what I got. And, you know, I still have my crocheted Jack Lambert doll down on the, uh, on the little Marshall mini stack right by the TV he stays there all football season. And my aunt made me that in the second grade. Wow, man. But I will say that the most memorable was, um, and just the feeling of, I, I just don't know that I've ever felt this sort of excitement before. I uh I started playing drums in the sixth grade. And uh so I had played drums for a while and and I think this is about my so I think I'm in eighth grade by this time this happens. And uh I'd asked for a new drum set. And uh up until then I had had this really badass Ludwig set, my first set, which I wish I still had, but at the time stuff that was old you didn't want anymore you wanted new shit and i look back going oh my Mm -hmm. god i wonder what that thing's worth these days (laughs) and i traded that up for a new shitty drum set that uh really was just terrible and um it was called pts pre-tune series remo made it and uh essentially you couldn't tune the drums they were supposedly already tuned for you so instead of the lugs they just had these little buckles and you would buckle that thing down and it was supposed to just sound amazing. Well, it didn't. Uh, it was terrible. And um, <laughs> who was so your I guy had, back then? Your drum guy. Always. Um, well, so at first, it, it's just always been Tommy Lee. I yeah. mean, it's, it's just it. I mean, really. I don't know that I had a favorite drummer before Tommy Lee. I mean, I liked um, Tommy Aldridge already. And, um, you know, a bunch of the anybody that I would see on headbangers ball, but you know, it was just so sporadic as far as like even reading, um, you know, you had to buy magazines, to even learn who played the drums for bands and shit. So yeah. Tommy Lee to me was always, you know, the rock star for yeah. me. And uh, so I got a white Pearl drum set, you know, cause that's what he had. And, um, but yes, but how did I get that drum set? I asked for a drum set for Christmas. I picked it out, everything, uh, Christmas happened. We had opened up all the presents we were going to open and uh, no drum set. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm a thankful kid. I, I really wasn't a brat or anything. So, you know, um, Hey, you know, I didn't get the uh, drum set. So I'm taking all my stuff, you know, taking your loot back to your room, you know, like you do. And, um, you know, just kind of, I guess I was a bit mopey, but you know, it, it's kind of like the Christmas story, you know, where they're like, do you get everything you want? For, yeah. Yeah. I got everything I wanted, you know? And this horn starts honking outside and, um, my brother-in-law, my sister's husband is just, is just honking out there, honking, honking, honking. And he's yelling out the window, Santa Claus is here. Santa Claus is here. And set up in the back of that pickup truck was a brand new white pearl drum set and um i mean i just gave myself chills thinking about it because that feeling of just like first of all being so glad that i was appreciative of what i had before this and not you know one of those lessons in life as to like hey you know 
be thankful for what you have mm-hmm. kind of thing because you just never know. And then here this thing rolls up, you know, and it was just like a dream, you know, just seeing that thing and just couldn't believe it. Um, and so that to me was uh, was definitely the coolest and most memorable thing that I ever at least got for Christmas. And then, you know, I would have to say, uh, you know, a, a close second, third and fourth would be all of my kids first Christmases, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, you're on the flip side then aren't you? you're on the flip side then. And really, honestly, once it's, I say that I kind of don't mean it. It's really when they get to be about three, when they actually understand what's going on, you know, like when they're their first Christmas, it's like, okay, cute photos where they don't give a shit. And really it's kind of the same when they're two, once they get to be about three, and then even four, five, six, seven. I mean, See you know, it's excitement just, build. Oh my god, it's just <laughs> the best, you know. And um, so, you know, I I spend uh, I've spent a lot of time putting things together. You know, the night before that, you know, go karts and um, train tables and drum sets, multiple drum sets now. Um, you know, doll houses, play houses, you know, all of that, and. Uh, you got it down to fine art. Wouldn't trade it. Well, the good news is, is I put all that shit together when I had the toy store. So I'm your guy. (laughs) If you need anything like that. Uh, And like I said, I've been working on bikes now for about 42 years. (laughs) So I'm pretty good. Pretty good with those too. Awesome, man. Jared, thank you, mate. I appreciate you chatting with me about this. I love it. Dude, thanks for having me, man. I, uh, I appreciate it so much. And uh, it's always good to see you. And, you guys have a lovely Christmas. You too, brother. And right. uh, say hey to Jane for me. I will do. And talk right. to you later. All right. Hopefully see All you right. real soon next year. <laughs> Love you, brother. All right. Love you too, mate. Bye-bye. See ya.